Whoa, bro, what are you doing with that? You're gonna hit the, you're gonna hit the top, Gina. Get her done. What is up? Welcome back to the channel. Yes, sir. We are working on the grounds today for the car. Real big important subject I want to talk to you guys a little bit about because that's one of the biggest issues with these swaps is they don't start and half the time it's because of a ground or they just don't run right. Now, I'm gonna show you the mess I got going on. I got a little bit of everything going on right now because we obviously been working on the wiring of the car, but I wanna show you what we got laid out here. Uh, a couple of the different grounds we're gonna be using today. I've already actually got a few of them on the car already, but this is kind of what we got going on. We got, this is gonna be our main ground that we're gonna use from the battery to the head. And then we'll go over that here in a minute. And then we're gonna have another one here. This one we're probably going to use to the chassis. And then this guy here is going to be for our alternator. Depending on the alternator that you guys have, um, some of them require an extra ground, some don't. This one particularly does. Now, and then also our body strap, this guy right here. Um, these ones here are obviously the ground straps. They're pretty common in like any um, OEM spec. You'll see them a lot and they're just... Uh, the ground straps are really designed for the bodies of the vehicles. It's really the best way to get the least amount of resistance. So that's why we use them for the body. So we're going to use that along with some of these um, washers. I'm not sure what these things are called. They're like a lock ring washer. But these are really good. They're really designed for grounding purposes. And they help to bite into the metal whenever you are grounding. And then we're going to have that bolt there that'll go with this guy here. But let me show you where all these stuff is gonna land. Now, mind you, like I told you guys earlier, I've already kind of started the wiring process with this thing because we got to get some things in place. I ran a four gauge wire all the way from, it's gonna come from this battery here, all the way here. And there's actually like a little grounding post over there. I'll show you guys where all my accessories and other things are gonna go as well. You guys see it in there, already hooked up. Just a four gauge wire there. So we got that ground already kind of ran, pre-ran I should say, and then it'll land here obviously where the battery's gonna land at. Now, the other one that I told you about that I already have on this particular motor is the, the strap, ground strap down here in the back. Now, from um, and mostly any, any harness that you can think of, any LS swap harness, even any of these factory harness, they always have a ground um, straps that come off the harness itself that usually tie into the top of the head. But this particular one, this is the GM one. It has one here. It does have a ring here. Let me see if I can show you guys or not. Uh, I already have it kind of on there. You guys can see um, that ring comes off your harness. So you'll have a ring there and then you'll have probably another one there or two on the other side. So those are very, very important. Make sure those are hooked up going to have a ground cable as well that goes from head to head that's very important so that way you are ma maximizing that same grounding point to the other head to the entire motor um so our main ground main ground is going to run even start drawing on this thing you guys can see uh, going to run from the battery we're actually going to tuck it inside the fender well we're going to come out through here try to keep it away from the heat as much as possible and we'll probably tie it down in here somewhere and then to the head that's our main ground for the basically for the entire harness if you think about it because that's going to go right to there right right to the head so that's what you want to do with your main ground go right to the head make sure you got a good clean grounding um, surface as far as the head goes if you guys got paint on it make sure you scratch that off and then we're going to take that other ground strap the actual ground strap come off that same post to the body itself i already kind of pre-drilled the hole down here we'll go straight to the body here so that way the body itself is grounded so we got that and then we're going to have one more come off the body straight to the frame we're going to grind it right in the front of the frame there and then the other one that we have is that one i told you guys about the alternator you guys can see here this one has a grounding post for the alternator now I, what i want to talk about is the the size of the gauge the size of the wire is very important um for example with this particular alternator this one specifies make sure that the ground cable is the same diameter as the power that's very important 
Now, mind you, on that same subject, when it comes down to uh, a grounding gauge, what gauge should it be? Like, what do you think I should, what do you recommend? One rule, one rule only. Always, always make sure your guys' grounding cable is either the same size, the exact same size as your power, if not bigger. If not bigger, go one size up if you can. But at the bare minimum, it cannot be smaller because the amount of current it's going to draw, there's no way that grounding cable should be smaller in diameter than your power cable. So if your power cable is a four gauge wire, which is probably the minimum I might recommend four gauge, um, make sure that grounding cable is the same size, if not bigger. So in this case, we're going to be using a two gauge. We're going with two gauge pretty much for everything other than like the grounding strap from head to head is four gauge that we're gonna do and then the guy that runs from here all the way to that little like, like kind of a terminal block um that one's gonna be four gauge but everything else is gonna be two gauge i even have an extra two gauge here because um he wanted some audio in the back and it already kind of had it set up but guys it was it was ridiculous the the cable that they were using the setup they had back there so now we got this nice two gauge wire that runs all the way back to the amp now the battery setup is going to be a little bit different on every car particularly this one has a lot of audio and car accessories and stuff like that so we're going to be running this type of block here this will allow us to run multiple um cables really all at once without having um a crazy bunch of wires going everywhere so we'll have one like i said one two the head one of them is for the audio another one to the frame and that last one we'll end up just using for that accessory block that i got down there so that way we know where all our grounds are nice and tidy yeah buddy guys went ahead and finished up without you guys you guys already know i get carried away but we think we got all the grounds pretty much laced in um with the exception of maybe one just tightening it up on the back side of the head but i got a mess going on over there so we'll get to it here in a minute but i want to show you guys real quick remember that thing we were talking about or i asked you guys opinion about and i actually had one of the the followers have a good idea and that's what kind of we went with I was asking you guys about the power steering bracket and where to put this damn reservoir and that's kind of what we came up with i really like it it's still off the head but it's on the side now so that reservoir will live on its side versus closer down here where it was kind of looked like it was aimlessly and it was just floating there but the reason why i'll show you guys this is that obviously we already made the bracket we got our other bracket bolted to that guy but i'm digging it but our ground remember we talked about the ground for the alternator here it is we got it all laced in and we just kind of ran it along that same line as the ac line to keep it away from uh the actual rag joint for the steering box because we still have to plumb our steering but all it is is right there hooked up to the frame you guys can see my washer right there and i went ahead and also pre-tapped those I, I tapped them out so that way it screwed right into the frame same thing on this side if you look on that side as well same thing there we are directly from the ground of heat from here directly to the frame oh yeah right i almost forgot about this guy so you guys can see how nice and neat that looks man i like the way this thing looks man i dig it so we have all our grounds pretty much hooked up um this guy right here is kind of loose still it's not tight by any means because i'm still pull this off i don't want to um be working on this while the 
really while the terminals are on you never want to do that especially you always want to disconnect the ground if you guys are working on anything uh but that's really how it's going to live there once everything's tightened up so like i said we have our ground let me show you guys over here that's how that came out i don't know if you guys can see on the camera earlier when we were working on this back here but you just see how the ground trap nice and tight right there i don't know if you guys can see that lock washer down there at the bottom but that really will help dig into the body of the car and then obviously we just put a little uh clip right there to hold that from moving around and keep it away from the heat uh, we still gotta trim this thing man i gotta find a little elbow for that that's the ac uh drain but just nice and neat guys down to the head remember very important that's the very most important uh piece to this puzzle right here and obviously everything comes back lands on the block here including the one four amplifier i've already run one all the way to the back for that because that was a little sketch back there we just got our power to worry about now um we're gonna work on that here later as i hope this information helps you guys out like i said um this is kind of how i do the grounds on my builds and my swaps hopefully this information helps you guys uh, if you guys have any questions put them down in the comments below and see if we can get to them if not for the next video but you guys gotta hit that subscribe button for me and hit the bell for notifications that way you guys are aware of anything we post help the channel grow but um i think next video we might actually tap into the ecu stuff and you guys can see what a craziness i got going on here i kind of tore apart the fuse box a little bit because i didn't not like what was going on but hopefully on the next video we'll kind of um talk about how to really wire this thing up and there's really not a lot of wires that's going to go on you'll really just have pigtail there and a few wires for uh so relays but we'll talk about that on the next video and hit the bell for notification and you guys already know stay wrenching